Thanks for joining us on another bi-weekly webinar Wednesday. I'm Stephen Phelps. I'm the marketing manager for Acumen, and I'm here with my account management team along with Alex Paulizus with Edisoft and the Edisoft team. Um, today we will be covering the basics of EDI, including what it is, how it works, and whether you should be considering it for your business. Near the end of this presentation, uh, we'll save some time to answer a few questions, so during that time, please use the chat option. Um, with that being said, I will now pass it on to Alex to begin the presentation. Thank you, Stephen, and thank you everyone for joining today. Um, like Stephen had mentioned, my name is Alexander Polizos. I am the Sage Channel Program Manager with Edisoft. And Edisoft, as you'll come to learn throughout this presentation, handles a number of supply chain considerations, and one of the key ones being EDI. So as part of today's agenda, I will flip to the next slide. We're going to be covering exactly what Stephen had spoken to what EDI is, who use, uh, how does EDI work, who uses EDI, and then I'll share a bit, about, uh, a bit with you about Edisoft's EDI solution in particular. We'll end the session with some Q&A. So what is EDI? Well, EDI stands for Electronic Data Interchange. Effectively, it's a language that's been set by a standards body for the exchange of business documents between two organizations. For most customers that Edisoft works with, it could be a supplier to a major big box retailer. And those big box retailers are also communicating down to their suppliers using EDI as well. But at the end of the day, it's essentially a language that helps exchange business documents in a standard way. On this slide, we're just going to go over a bit, about, a bit more about the history of EDI and how you can understand it even by region. So, the first bullet point on the left there under EDI standards by region is ANSI X.12. Now what that means is it's the typically the North American standards body. So ANSI X.12, Edifac, Tradecoms, XML, those are all body standards body that set what the language is, effectively the alphabet for EDI. Now ANSI X.12 is typically used in the North American region as I spoke to, Edifact is more for Europe and UK, but is used in some global situations. And then similar considerations for Tradecoms and XML, but the two most prevalent are ANSI X.12 and Edifact. And if you're based in North America, you'd likely be facing ANSI X.12. On the right hand of this screen are just talking about connectivity options. So when you actually exchange an EDI document with a business partner, whether they are a vendor, a supplier, a carrier, and we'll get to that in just a moment. There are multiple ways that you can actually establish that connection, and this is the the highway, if you will, or the the telecom infrastructure that actually sends and receives documents. So it's simply the infrastructure that allows these EDI documents to flow between organizations. There's the VAN, a value-added network, and then there are different protocols, communication protocols within the VAN that could be supported. FTP, SFTP, FTPS, AS2. Now, no need to get too into the details there. Just identifying some of the components of EDI, knowing that it's electronic data inter interchange. There are different standards supported by different regions. And there are different ways, actual communication methods that you can use to connect with your partners. So here's some common types of EDI documents. Now, the numbers of each, of, we've, se we've separated into two categories. There are many more EDI documents than the six that you're seeing on, on the screen right now. There are, uh, the two categories that we're showing here are the most common order management documents and the most common order fulfillment documents, okay? And these documents, depending on your relationship in the supply chain, could be either inbound or outbound. So what does that mean? So if we look on the left-hand side, order management documents, you'll notice that within the, the orange rectangles are some common business terms that you would be familiar with. A purchase order, a purchase order acknowledgement, an invoice. Now EDI, in this case the 850, which is an ANSI X.12 standard document, is the, uh, is the EDI purchase order, the 850. Okay? 855 is the purchase order acknowledgement and 810 is the invoice. Now you might have numbers, uh, the document numbers being provided to you by a business partner saying this is the document I would like to exchange with you. 
And depending on your relationship with them, it could be an inbound document that you're receiving or an outbound document that you're expected to send. Now, the most common example, if you are a supplier to Amazon, as an example, you would be receiving the 850 purchase order, and you would, so that would be an inbound document for you, and you'd actually be sending an 855 purchase order acknowledgement or an 810 invoice. Those would both be outbound documents. On the right hand of this screen are some other common types. A lot of them we're seeing today as the supply chain continues to uh, become more and more efficient with companies actually specializing in particular activities. Now, one of those as it pertains to the supply chain is a 3PL, a third party logistics provider. So these are companies that own warehouses or warehousing space and they take on products from multiple different businesses. They simply help move those products uh, from one location to uh, ultimately the end user that's purchasing them. Now the common documents used with 3PLs or third-party logistics providers are the 940 warehouse shipping order, 943 warehouse stock transfer advice, and 945 warehouse shipment advice. Now the way this would work is if you are a company that had products that were being stored by stored and shipped by a 3PL on your behalf, you would actually send them a 940, a warehouse shipping order, which would be based on an 850 purchase order that you received. So Amazon might send you an 850 purchase order that's an inbound document. You would then tell your 3PL, we need to send these items from this purchase order to Amazon you would give them a 940 warehouse shipping order, uh, warehouse shipping order, which would be an outbound document from you to the 3PL. So there's many different ways that EDI can be used. These are some of the most common types uh, of documents that you can see and likely will see if you're doing EDI or looking to um, uh, use EDI. Okay. So how does EDI work? Now, effectively, what you'd be looking at in most cases for EDI is an order to cash cycle. So if we think back to the documents that I just covered, it's typically the relationships that are set up for EDI participants, typically a supplier vendor relationship. It typically starts with a purchase order and ends with an invoice. Now, without EDI, that order to cash cycle can be very manual. It could involve multiple people processing orders over the phone, over fax, over email, um, multiple different sources. You can have different portals that you're accessing orders from, typing those into your Sage 300 system to ensure that the orders are populated and entered in order entry so that your downstream fulfillment processes can take place. You need to have that order in order entry so you can either print off a pick slip, a pick order, uh, send that information down to your warehouse. However you're handling that process today, it all starts with getting that order into Sage 300. Now, once that order is being fulfilled, typically through phone, fax, email, or some other manual interaction, the fulfillment side of your business is typically going to be typing things back into Sage or, or providing information to someone who has access to Sage so they can confirm that these goods for this sales order were shipped, enter the shipment ID, enter any tracking number information, enter, uh, create an invoice, and then you've completed your order to cash cycle. So without EDI, without having that common language that can standardize the exchange of business documents, there's a lot of manual processes going around just to facilitate the digital and financial audit trail of your order to cash cycle. And all of that is intended to be captured and stored for financial and operational visibility within Sage 300. That is your single source of truth at the end of the day. Now with EDI, and you'll notice EDI in the bottom half of this screen is being represented by Edisoft logo. It takes far less people because the standard language is facilitating an easy way to actually bring those documents into Sage 300. So on the previous slide, I talked about the 850 purchase order. Well, with, e with EDI and integrated EDI, we can very easily bring those purchase orders automatically from all of your trading partners into Sage 300, having them show up in the order entry screen as sales orders. As your business completes its fulfillment cycle and you update an invoice record, we can actually pull that out into an EDI format and create an EDI invoice. That was the 810 document from the last screen. 
we take the information from Sage, we either are sending information into Sage or pulling information out of Sage in real time and completing that order to cash cycle. So what we're showing here between these, uh, the two halves of the screen on the top and the bottom without EDI and with EDI are essentially a way of automating and orchestrating your order to cash cycle. And what EDI provides is that standard language that allows us to do that. Okay. So who is EDI for? Well, there's statistics out there and there's a varying range because it's very hard to determine, but all are consistently over 50%. So over 50% of businesses or supply chain businesses have adopted EDI and in some cases they mandate its use. So if we look at uh, this concatenated version of a supply chain, we have suppliers, logistics providers, and then retail providers, okay? So on the left-hand side would be suppliers to the retail, big box retailers on the right-hand side. Now you'll notice the Amazons, Best Buys, Walgreens, Publix, Walmarts of the world. Those are typically the participants in the supply chain that mandate the use of EDI. So for you to do business with them, they'll typically say you need to be using EDI to exchange some of those common business documents that we covered earlier. Now the suppliers for these big box retailers uh, is likely some of you listening right now. On the left-hand side, these are some sample Edisoft customers across many vertical industries that have made use of EDI to automate and orchestrate their order to cash cycle with those retailers. Wall is a consumer packaged good or electronics company. Bugatti is a uh, apparel company, uh, handbags and apparel. Mark Anthony is a cosmetics company. McCall Farms is a food and beverage company. Microcell is a electronics company. So Edisoft has seen and done this with multiple suppliers to these big box retailers across many vertical industries. There are certain requirements within those different vertical industries that need to be captured on documents. Most notably, uh, would be lot and serial or expiry information in food and beverage or serial number information for consumer packaged goods, specifically electronics. So in doing the exchange of documents, we're actually making sure that we're capturing any vertical ind industry specific information as well, which would be required by your trading partner. Now that middle section is one that also makes use of EDI. So logistics providers, if you are doing a uh, high level of volume with particular carriers or a third party logistics provider. They could end up asking or proposing the use of EDI to make both parties more efficient in the exchange of documents, right? So we see FedEx, USPS, UPS, uh, the bottom logo in the logistics column is representation of a third party logistics company. So you can see that whoever the participant in the supply chain is, whether it is the retail shops actually interacting with the end consumers of products, which could be your products, whether it is the logistics provider that is actually transporting and shipping products between supplier and retailer, or if it's the supplier actually producing or distributing the product to these retailers, everyone along that chain can make use of EDI and actually uh, operationalize EDI to make it a, um, uh, an efficiency or a, a benefit to their company in terms of efficiency. And Edisoft can show you how to do that. So the big box retailers, Amazon, Best Buy, Walgreens, Publix, and there's many, there's thousands more that use EDI and mandate that their suppliers use it. They found a way to make it efficient, to use EDI to make it efficient for their business. Edisoft can show you the same thing for yours. Okay. So here's some key signs that your business needs EDI. You might have order inaccuracies as you're manually talked about that order to cash cycle, what it looks like with EDI and without EDI. Without it today, you might be seeing that there might be manual um, entry of orders into Sage. Well, we're all human. We can all make a mistake and our fingers can slip on a keyboard and there might be um, the wrong number or the wrong uh, zero or amount of zeros or the wrong item information or SKU code. Um, where that might be the case, could be an indicator that you can make use of EDI. Might be taking too long to process orders and complete the order to cash cycle. So aside from just the actual manual, or the inaccuracies that come from manual data rekeying, 
it actually might be taking you too long to process the amount of volume that you may or may not have. And if that's the case, then you actually could be leaving potential sales capacity on the table. You could be limiting your company's potential and growth curve simply because you don't have the manpower to enter in all these orders. Well, EDI is one way that you can maintain your existing headcount and process far more orders and invoices as you complete that order to cash cycle. And third, this is a downstream effect of that, experiencing inventory surpluses or stockouts on a frequent basis. By not being able to get those orders into your system efficiently and effectively, you're creating lack of visibility downstream to your fulfillment teams. It could be your warehouse, it could be a 3PL, a third party logistics provider. By them not being able to see how many sales orders are being entered into Sage 300, how many sales orders are being processed, they have little visibility as to what type of inventory levels they need to be carrying. So the idea is we want to carry the optimal amount of inventory at all, at all times. Well, visibility into the sales pipeline, whether there are cyclical or seasonal considerations, or simply just sheer volume that's being processed, the other departments within any organization require that visibility as to what they're expected to be delivering based on a particular sales order. So there are uh, downstream effects of not using EDI, and that comes down to actually the lifeblood of a lot of uh, suppliers, distributors, or manufacturers using Sage 300, which is how much inventory do I need to have on hand um, versus can I have on hand? And by having that sales order process sooner than later, you have visibility um, to what capacity you have to fulfill that and meet potentially any deadlines that your customers are, are counting on. Okay. So at a soft EDI solution, uh, just going into what we provide, we have a SaaS multi-tenanted browser-based EDI solution. It can connect um, using our Sage 300 connector, obviously to Sage 300. So it, whether uh, you're using Sage 300 cloud or Sage 300 on-prem, we have no issue connecting. Um, it does, it covers essentially the entire scope of EDI as it might pertain to your business. So it could be the common order cash cycle documents, it could be warehousing documents, it could be logistics or carrier documents. Uh, but in any case, uh, whether it's connectivity, just simply translating the EDI document, uh, working with thousands, or we have a library of thousands of EDI trading partners and labels, uh, as some of them require specific labels that go on the physical shipment. Um, Edisoft has seen it all, has done it all, and we'll get into a bit more about Edisoft's history um, in the world of EDI. So why choose Merchant Cloud or Edisoft's Merchant Cloud? We actually don't introduce any software customizations, field level data mapping, or data reconciliation. So our integration, our connector, if you will, to Sage 300 is real time. Uh, we are able to provide that data synchronization without any field level mapping or software customization. If you look at integrating two applications, in this case we're talking about EDI with Sage 300, you might end up finding yourself creating a customized bridge or a customized integration. That creates a lot of rigidity and inflexibility as you move forward with your business and you might be looking to upgrade to the latest version of Sage. So rest assured, uh, if you decide to that EDI is uh, something that you'd like your business to take advantage of, Edisoft and our Merchant Cloud solution and our integration to Sage does not introduce that level of complexity to your, your server and your systems. It's all going through our connector and it's, uh, it's configurable, not customized. And when you implement Merchant Cloud, we're going to make sure that you have no EDI non-compliance fees. So those documents that we've spoken about, whether it's a purchase order or a warehouse shipping order, the data needs to be accurate, it needs to comply to the trading partner specification, and it needs to be sent within a certain amount of time. We can help you get there with Merchant Cloud. Eliminate paper, the use of paper, and the processing costs associated. And like I said, as it pertains to integration, eliminate data silos. You want all of your supply chain applications, starting with your ERP, and anything downstream, EDI, warehousing, carrier management, you want them all talking to each other. So we eliminate that data silo with our configurable integration. I'll let you quickly look over these three categories of benefits for Merchant Cloud, but essentially, when we boil it down, what Merchant Cloud and any Edisoft product for that matter, these solutions as they 
enhance and extend functionality within say 300 are there to provide you visibility productivity and ultimately leading to profitability so you'll notice when we looked at the order to cash cycle with edi and without edi we're enhancing productivity you'll notice when we talked about the three key signs that your business needs edi one of that third key sign related to inventory surpluses and stockouts well that was related to visibility let's make sure the entire organization has visibility asap and then ultimately both of those combine to enhance profitability and the overall operational costs for your business of processing a single order from start to finish that order to cash cycle as well as making sure that if you are doing edi today and you have non-compliance fees let's eliminate those so again, increasing your profitability per transaction, per order, if you will. Okay. So why choose Edisoft? This is a bit about us, and we'll get into Q&A just after this slide. Uh, we were founded in 1995, so we've been doing this nearly uh, a quarter century. Um, all of our technology is developed in-house, so we do not um, go overseas or offshore for any of our technology uh, development. We have our team here in-house with us. Uh, we have a plus 40 net promoter score. Now, essentially what that means is on a scale from one to 10, um, we are skewed positively towards people rating us nine or 10, both from our products and our support. Uh, we take a lot of pride in building out a professional services team that delivers real-time technical support. These are mission critical systems in terms of receiving your orders and getting them into your accounting system. You do not take it lightly as a business and we certainly don't either. So that plus 40 net promoter score speaks volumes um, as an industry leading score within our space, uh, but also speaks volumes to how seriously uh, we take our support, both technical, cons consultative, et cetera. Our key products, you can see here that uh, another key reason of why customers choose Edisoft is we're looking at your entire supply chain platform. We're not just a point product for EDI. We know that that EDI order to cash cycle doesn't just end when you receive an order. There are requirements for that EDI cycle that extend past just getting the order into Sage 300. That's why we have a warehousing column on this page and fulfillment connectors to other applications like carrier management systems. Now, I won't get into those, but these are some of the key reasons why people go with Edisoft. Our trusted reputation, um, uh, the, the, the sheer amount of time we've been doing this and our domain expertise. Um, are the view to having a platform to suit your needs today and as you grow tomorrow. Um, and for those that are familiar with configuration versus customization, that's another key point for some individuals as well. And then you'll notice on the right hand side that we have customers globally. So with that, I will hand it back over to you, Stephen, uh, and we can open up the floor for any Q&A. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. So at this time, we'll open up the chat option. Um, please feel free to ask us any questions. We did have a few questions come in during your presentation, so we can go ahead and get started right now. Uh, the first question that came in was, what is the difference between Merchant Cloud and other EDI solutions? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. I appreciate that, Stephen. So I think to answer that question, I'm going to repeat myself somewhat slightly from that last slide. So Number one, Merchant Cloud is a native cloud solution. So this means if your company has a view to getting to the cloud, uh, migrating to the cloud, this is one piece um, of your software systems that can get you there. Not all EDI providers are native cloud. Some of them are on-premise. So that's one technology consideration. Within the technology camp, again, I'll go back to configurable versus customization. I cannot stress enough uh, with customers that we've worked with at Edisoft how key that has been for their business, where we, they have looked to upgrade Sage to take advantage of some of the great features that come out with Sage 300 um, uh, in, in its own release cycle. If you have customized applications or applications that are integrated in a customized way, it actually prevents you with update, um, upgrading one of the connected applications with speed and efficiency. So, uh, I wanted to highlight that again as a key difference between Merchant Cloud and other EDI providers. Um, the other key difference here is actually the platform that I spoke to. So aside from how the technology is built and whether it's cloud or on-premise, one of the key considerations is your needs as they pertain to EDI really are related to your order to cash cycle. So understanding that when you get an EDI purchase order in, 
how do we orchestrate, not just automate the movement of data, but how do we orchestrate a business process? What all of the customers that have worked with Edisoft know at the end of the day is, I want to get an order into Sage 300. I want to pick, pack, and ship that order, however that is being done today. Then I want that invoice to automatically go back to our trading partner. And if you're using EDI, uh, we can do that more efficiently, but what a lot of um, competing systems don't take into account is that entire order to cash cycle. So they're focused on getting an EDI document translated and then into the system. But there's a relationship between those documents and that's where Merchant Cloud differentiates, uh, differentiates itself. Thanks. Um, so the second question that came in was, how much do EDI solutions usually cost? Sure, another great question. A lot of that depends on the um, two variable factors between from customer to customer. One, how many uh, partners uh, are you conducting EDI or exchanging EDI documents with? So we have to take two things into consideration here. One, how many connections to different organizations are you looking to make? And what documents are they looking to exchange with you? Are they more advanced documents like carrier freight? and remittance documents or credit remittance, or are they simple order to cash documents, the purchase orders and the invoices that I showed early in the presentation. So to give sort of a high level view, typically if you're under five trading partners and you're doing the pretty standard transactions, you're gonna be looking somewhere in the four to $500 a month range. Um, if you're, as you go past five trading partners, typically the complexity of your EDI documents increases and you'll be over that $500 mark. Um, you can imagine that that was the five trading partner mark. So with one trading partner, you can sort of scale it down accordingly. It's not a perfect science, um, but typically for people just starting out, you're gonna see somewhere in a, a couple hundred dollars um, per month on a, on a subscription basis. Great. Um, so yeah, due to time, we're gonna do one more question. And then the last question is, how long does it take to get Merchant Cloud up and running? Another great question. So uh, part of what you got, part of what everyone wants to know is how quickly can I start doing EDI with Walmart, Amazon, et cetera, because I want to start getting those orders in. I want to start receiving orders from Amazon and increasing my, uh, you know, the size of my business. Now, what I've spoken to and stressed earlier, configurable versus customization means we can do that very quickly. So as an example with Walmart, um, we've done this before, we've done it with Sage 300, uh, we've done it with hundreds of customers. We can get a connection to Walmart for uh, some of the basic EDI documents and even some of the intermediate or advanced ones, typically within two weeks. So if Amazon or Walmart came to you today and said, I want to get up and running, uh, within three weeks, if you engage with Edisoft, uh, we should be able to get you there in two. A lot of that variability, when I say should, is the testing cycles of those trading partners. So they actually have their own schedules they like to test. Unfortunately, neither you nor Edisoft can control their resources, but typically uh, with Edisoft, which is a unique uh, proposition in terms of how quickly we can get you up and running because of how our technology was built, uh, you're looking at anywhere from two to three weeks depending on the trading partner themselves. Great, and uh, with that, so we're gonna wrap it up. Um, again, guys, thank you for joining us on our webinar Wednesday. If you do have any more questions, please reach out to am at acumenfl.com, or you can always give us a call at 407-965-2411. Um, again, thanks again for joining. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Um, thanks, Alex, for the presentation, and thank you, Edisoft. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. Thanks for having us, Stephen. All the, all the best. Thank you. Have a good one.